And then last year, just about this time, you will recall that uh, uh, the Republicans had just nominated uh, their vice presidential candidate, and everybody was, you know, the media was obsessed with it, and cable was 24 hours a day, and Obama's lost his mojo, and... <laughs> You remember all that? There's something about August going into September where everybody in Washington gets all wee weed up. You ever heard that term before? Wee weed up. Yeah. No. Is that a black thing? Is it a Harvard thing? Is it a kid thing? Is it a Muslim thing? <laughs> My Muslim faith. Hmm. Is it a Kenyan thing? Is it a Kenyan thing? <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. That's funny. It could be a black thing. It could be a Harvard thing. Right. It could be something they say in it Harvard. Might be, might be something where they would never have me. Or it might be like a real ghetto thing. I don't know. I'll wee weed up. I'll wee weed up. Welcome to the Armstrong and Getty Show. Uh, less than half of Americans uh, trust Barry to make good decisions. 49% down from 60% at the 100 day mark. Uh, overall approval was 57%, it's 12 points lower than it was at its peak, but uh, presidents always have, almost always have dropping approval ratings as they do more stuff. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's got to be somewhat troubling to them. Got this quote, kind of interesting, short. Uh, Bill Whittle is a commentator. He says, you know, the one thing I learned from last election is that if you have, you have a young, hip, likable, historic candidate and you promote him through CBS, ABC, NBC, CNN, MSNBC, and all the rest, not to mention stand-up, late-night comedy, the entire music industry, university, high school, and even elementary school teachers, just about every major movie and television star, and run against the oldest candidate in the history of the republic, despised by the base of his own party, a man unwilling to take the fight to the only fields in which he can win, and representing the incumbent party responsible for two unpopular wars, a two-term president with historic disapproval ratings, in the middle of the worst economy since the Depression is... Well, you put all those forces in, in harness, and you, sir, will attain 53% of the vote. Wow. What does that mean? That's pretty strong stuff. What does that mean about us as a country? I, I, you're in as a, a media lapping as people. As, as a people who measure our experience and our impressions of life primarily now through major media. As I've said many times, we don't trust our perceptions anymore and those of our friends and loved ones. We look to the media. Well, speaking of the media, I saw Dick Morris on O'Reilly the other night. We all know where Dick Morris is politically if you follow this sort of thing, right? He, uh, well, I know what he does when he sits around the house. <laughs> he has he's, put on a little weight. Yeah, he gained a few. Anyway, I'm sorry, what were you? Mm -hmm. But he said that uh, he was talking about the health care thing and Obama going around and stumping it and how it's going to hurt him politically when he says these things. And, and Dick Morris said... He said, you know, Obama, I think, is the first president we've had in a long time who's really more concerned about getting things done that he is right than getting reelected. He'd rather go down as a one-term president, you know, having tried to do the things he thinks are the right thing mm. than, than not. And I thought that was really interesting, and that's a lot of credit from Dick Morris, who rarely says anything kind about anybody who's a D. Well, he's, he's a very cynical man as well. And if, Yeah, he's a very cynical man. Yeah. And I thought, I wonder if there's a way to... Uh, transform our view of the presidency because I can see how presidents would get caught up in that. We have a bit of a if you were not elected for a second term you were a failure. Right. It doesn't matter if you tried to do things that would be good for the country or good for your party or you believed him and failed, which is a lot more admirable than than just trying to hang on for another term. Right. But if you get a second term, you're seen as more successful. Yeah. Maybe we need to quit uh I've always hated this, this ranking the president's best to worst and all that sort of stuff. You know, yeah. If you get into that game... Grossly oversimplified well, at right, best. Right, and if you if you get into the where am I going to rank in history game, you're never going to get anything done. Right, right. All you do is uh, is pander to people, mm -hmm. get reelected, and consider yourself a winner. Anyway, I thought that was interesting. That is interesting. Oh, by the way, go to armstrongandgettyradio.com. I shall. Armstrongandgettyradio.com. Click on videos. There is a video entitled Sharia in America. Watch it and fear for your country. There is an organized, huge campaign to Islamize the United States of America. It's announced. It is organized. It is confessed to. It is shocking. And it's on display in a weird setting. It's not... This video is... It's a series of incidents at the Arab Festival in Dearborn, Michigan. But it is incredibly troubling.
Stay tuned. Or don't stay tuned. Yes, stay tuned. But that's not what I meant. It's this century's nightmare. Jihadism. Thank you, uh, Mitt. Um, But go to armstrongandgettyradio.com. Watch that video. Should we just stick to the Sermon on the Mount? A passage that is so radical that it's doubtful that our own Defense Department would survive its application. Which passages of Scripture should guide our public policy? This is my private area, my, my place of zen and peace. Listen to it. Shut up, Grandma! They're going to be built, and Reverend Wright, uh, uh, my pastor, who I, I speak about in the chapter in the book, I think represents the best of what uh, the black church has to offer. No, no, no. Not God bless America. God damn America. That's in the Bible. Now here's something we hope you'll really like. Obama praised American Muslims for their contribution to U.S. to the U.S. society at a Ramadan dinner at the White House this week. Said the accomplishments of Americans, America's Muslim uh, community, are too long to list. This is Jeopardy. <laughs> Islam dropped a coffee bean into hot water and added a zero to the Roman numerals. I am surprised. The Muslim president didn't have time to mention all of that. Here is today's final Jeopardy answer. 